Jean-Francois is going to talk to you about Bayesian parameter estimation. Take it away. Thank you, Christine. So today's session will be about Bayesian parameter estimation, which will be somewhat different from what you've seen earlier in the school. So earlier in the school, you learned how to use the Jetscape framework. You learned from James and from other people what is the general software infrastructure behind the Jetscape framework. You've learned from Shun what, how to use more the soft sector of the Jetscape framework, how to describe the evolution of the quark-gluon plasma with, a hydrona with hydrodynamics that can be described with the music hydrodynamics code. You've heard from Dima about how to study the later stage of the collision with hydronic transport, um, in this case, SMASH. And you've heard also from Doiko and Yasuki about how the Jetscape, fr the Jetscape framework can describe the production of hard partons in, in a heavy end collision and how these partons interact with the medium, lose energy to the medium, and deposit energy in the medium. Now, today's lecture is more about what you do once you have your model and you can produce observables, you can produce output from your model that you want to compare with experiments. And Bayesian parameter estimation in this tool is this tool that allows you to systematically compare the output of your model with data. Now, the lecture is structured in a relatively agnostic way about your model. So I will not be assuming that the output, that the model you want to compare is the Jetscape framework, although it can certainly be used with the Jetscape framework. And we've been using it within Jetscape. We have a few papers that will come out in the coming weeks or months uh, using Bayesian parameter estimation to compare the Jetscape framework with data. But the, the presentation today itself will be more generic um, and it should be applicable for any model to data comparison that you, you, you would like to perform. Now today on Slack, we have um, three extremely capable TAs, uh, Derek, Weiyao and Dan, who also helped uh, and provide a lot of feedback on these slides and help with the hands-on session. So let me first thank them right away and please do not hesitate to ask questions on Slack, you're in very good hands. Um, you will get um, very good answers from them. Now, just to give a short overview of what will be essentially the rest of this summer school. So today, this, this lecture uh, will be an hour followed, roughly an hour, followed by two hours of hands-on sessions. Now the hands-on sessions, everything is in Jupyter notebooks that hopefully you'll be able to run online with actually no installations uh, using the binder uh, software, the, the binder website. If that doesn't work, you'll have to run it locally on your machine. Uh, there's some instruction right now on the Slack channel, but let's, let's uh, take care of this uh, once we get to the hands-on session. I would assume that at this point, either binder will work or just out of the box, or it will be relatively straightforward for you to run a generic Jupyter notebook on your machine. If you have questions, uh, the Slack channel is uh, this one. So please post your questions there. Tomorrow, uh, Weiyao will be taking over and will be giving a short lecture on the Trento model, which is also part of Jetscape. It's the initial stage of, uh, of the Jetscape framework. He will then uh, give roughly two hours and a half uh, hands-on session on, again, on the Bayesian parameter estimation, this time using Trento as an example of model that you want to calibrate on data. Now, everything I'll be discussing today will be covered again in the sense in this example by Weiyao, and actually much more. Weiyao's example will be a step up from what I'll be presenting today. And later this week, there'll be examples on applying Bayesian parameter estimation for the hard sector uh, by Yishen. Now, the big picture is 
as most of you probably know, the objective of model to data comparison. So you want to describe some physical process. You have a model that describes this physical process. In our case, it can be a relativistic heavy end collision. And our model can be multi-staged, can have different components, initial stage, hydrodynamics like music, hydraulic transport like smash. And you want to learn about this model by comparison with data. In our case, the data comes from RIC and the LHC, and it can take different form, multiplicities, V2s, uh, jet measurements. And you want to constrain your, your model from data. Now, I'll already restrict, I'll already clarify the question that I'll be discussing today, which is, we'll be trying to learn about model parameters from data. So what are model parameters? So, so the, the, your model have, has unknowns, it can be, for example, an initial condition. It can be a details of how energy is deposited in a heavy end collision. It can be transport coefficient in your hydrodynamics, like the shear or the ball viscosity. It could be something as uh, indirect as a hadronic cross section in SMASH. So you have a, a number of different um, um, unknowns or a number of different quantities that you'd like to constrain by comparison with measurements. And this is what Bayesian parameter estimation allows us to do systematically. Now, perhaps you've already heard about Bayesian parameter estimation. Most likely you have, and I'm sure you all have uh, questions. A few of the questions, I'm listing here a few of the questions that I will try to answer today. Maybe one of them that, that is um, the most obvious is, why do we need Bayesian parameter estimation? So we're, most of us have been doing physics science for a while, and we've been doing, we've been doing model to data comparison our entire lives. That, that is our bread and butter. So why do we need Bayesian parameter estimation to do this, this uh, model to data comparison? What are the benefits? When should, you, when should you use these techniques? And when is it probably unnecessary to use Bayesian parameter estimation? Another question is what kind of constraints do you get? Um, do you expect that you, know, you perform your Bayesian parameter estimation and you get you know, shear viscosity is 0.4 plus or minus 0.04 plus or minus 0.02. Is that what you're looking for? Or do you get maybe a different type of constraint that's more complicated than that? If you're working more on the theory community, uh, perhaps you have insights about some of the model parameters that you would like to combine with, um, with a constraint on, on data. So for example, let's say you have good evidence from a calculation that the shear viscosity cannot be larger than a certain value at a certain temperature. Is there a way to systematically include this knowledge when you do your model to data comparison? And I will make the point that yes, actually you can. Perhaps you're in the experimental community and you want to know what you can do with Bayesian parameter estimation aside from providing the data. Is, that, is there something that you, can, that you can do with it? And I will try to make the point that you, there, are, there are applications where you can use Bayesian parameter estimation to guide the type of measurements that, you, that would be especially interesting to look at. You can have a special case where um, your model is extremely expensive, which would mean it takes days or weeks to just know, just get something you can compare with data for, for a set of parameters. That means that you probably cannot have, you cannot probe the parameter space of your model virtually but you might still be interested to compare with data. So I'll discuss today how we have tools in Bayesian parameter estimation that can take into account the fact that you may have a, you may not have a lot of information about your, um, your parameter space, but you can actually include, you can take into account that uncertainty and still compare with data and still get useful constraints on your parameter. Now, I, I don't know if there's any questions up to now. I